Tatch has set the scene nicely for our year ahead. But here at Donington Park on the first day, we've seen our own fast and furious qualifying. Let's take a look. Third place on the grid for the GSE Ducati of Neil Hodgson, one of the only two riders to improve his time in yesterday afternoon's session and looking very focused for this season's championship. John Reynolds, also on Ducati second on the grid, and feeling very confident following his Brands Hatch victory. John has worked hard during qualifying on his machine setup for the race and is a master tactician. Pole position man Steve Hislop riding for Yamaha shaved two tenths of a second off the World Championship lap record for superbikes with an incredible lap of 1 minute 33.25 seconds. It would be fair to say that Steve has dominated qualifying. That indeed was a blistering pole position for Steve Hislop. That's not so far short of what the Grand Prix bikes were doing here just two or three years ago. Hayden McKenzie, Plater and Crawford on the second row, Goddard on the other Kawasaki heads row three, and the two Yamaha teammates, Rutter and Paul Young, on row four. And the number eight Yamaha, Steve Hislop on pole position there. Alongside him, Reynolds. Then it's Neil Hodgson, number four, and Chris Walker completing the front row on the Suzuki. And it is indeed Chris Walker, the number two Suzuki rider, who gets the drop. We're looking backwards now from Steve Hislop. The number six there, Sean Emmett. There's Neil Hodgson, number four, on the INS Ducati. Reynolds also and Hayden got great starts, but Chris Walker, the stalker as they call him, leads. Away they go down towards the old hairpin, into the right-hander. Right on his tail, though, is Steve Hislop, who was so unbelievably quick round here in practice. Hislop has really set the MB4U.com British Superbike Championship for the year 2000 alight, and he's doing it again. Through on the inside of Chris Walker goes Steve Hislop. He is tucked in. I've never seen Hislop looking fitter and more focused, and that incredibly sharp haircut makes him look pretty mean. On board now with Steve Hislop looking backwards, and you see Chris Walker coming into view. That's because Hislop is ahead. Now, Hislop needs to be ahead of the gaggle behind him. Hislop likes to ride, he likes to lead from the front. He's at his best when he doesn't have to brush shoulders with anybody. So this is an ideal position for Steve Hislop at the start of this race. Hislop, now 37 years of age, the TT veteran Hislop, but he's having something of a renaissance now and going really well at the Melbourne Loop. But Walker still in second place. Number three on the Ducati, John Reynolds. Championship leader so far in the very early stages. And let me tell you, after this whole series is over, they will have raced 850 miles of very hectic pace. And there will emerge a champion. Reynolds wants to be champion. He won it in 1992. He would love to do it again. On the right there, number five, James Hayden, going inside and making a super passing move on Neil Hodgson. Neil Hodgson, another one of the front row men, but it's Hayden moving through. Ducati versus Ducati. Away they go down towards the Melbourne Loop. Hodgson on the right-hand side of your picture. Hayden sides across the front. Is he going to go wide? Can Neil Hodgson get the drive out of there, Roger? Now back at the front, and it's Steve Hislop on bike number eight. From Walker getting it sideways there into Fogarty's on bike number two. And in close proximity now is JR, John Reynolds on bike number three, closely followed by Hodgson on number four. The number three Ducati rider, look at the rear end of Chris Walker, backing the bike in. He went a little bit wide there because he was going down the gearbox. Too much rear brake. The rear end broke traction, but that's the way Chris prefers to ride. New race leader, John Reynolds, number three. Both local men, both Reynolds and Walker, live just up the road in Nottingham. Family man Reynolds knows his way around here like his own back garden. He is going well now, Reynolds, but look again at Hodgson on the inside. Up to third goes Neil Hodgson on the orange Ducati. Yes, he's got the better of Steve Hislop and slotting in now behind Chris Walker as they head off down Crena Curves. On board now with Steve Hislop looking backwards. Now Hislop must have made some sort of mistake here. You can see Walker coming alongside him. Now you can see the acceleration of John Reynolds and John Reynolds on bike three goes past. Now this is looking backwards again from Hislop and Hodgson up the inside. So that made Hodgson up into third place. And you can see now from the pictures that Reynolds is slightly stretching an advantage. 
yellow flag is out. There's, there's a rider somewhere with a problem. The yellow flag is out. That means ride with caution and you must not overtake under a yellow flag. Again, that rear wheel action from Chris Walker. Down into the Melbourne hairpin, the Suzuki sliding all over the track with the rear end. But why was the flag? That's why the flag was out. Hislop, number eight, Steve Hislop has parked the Yamaha, he's shaking his head, we're puzzled, he clearly is puzzled. Roger, something mechanical? Must be something mechanical, there was no crash damage there to the bike and none to Steve Hislop either, but look at Hodgson, Hodgson's the man on the move, not only has he set the fastest lap of the race so far, he's not settled for third at all, he's past Walker now, the back ends of those bikes squirming as they go right-handed through Craner Curves, 120 miles an hour through there before going left-handed, up, up with the engine revs at 130 miles an hour, back two gears for the old hairpin, 90 miles an hour through there. Hodgson now has to work really hard to catch John Reynolds. Mackenzie then up into fifth place. His teammate, number four, Neil Hodgson, is well ahead of him. But Mackenzie now having a good ride. And the more and more track miles he gets under his belt on the Ducati, the more settled Neil Mackenzie will become on the machine. And there's Hodgson just come through the picture. Can Walker catch Hodgson? Number two, Chris Walker, is indeed the crowd's favourite. He has finished three times in this championship, but he will not finish this race. There is a lot of smoke. You can see it yourself. Walker has blown the Suzuki, and with it, he has blown any chance of lifting points in round three here at Donington Park, because that bike is going nowhere. And he better get off the racing line, because almost certainly it'll be throwing oil. Well done, Chris. Park it on the grass. Number 77, Brent Sampson, one of the tail-enders about to be that, but Brent Sampson, the man from Plymouth, a very able privateer performer, and he goes well in this series. Of course, the privateers within this race are signified by a yellow front number plate, so you can see that we've got two yellow front number plates there, Hodgson just about to exit the Melbourne Loop and chase after this man, John Reynolds, so the yellow number plate signifies a privateer. Into Goddard's hard on the front brake going in, down three gears on the Ducati Hill, boom out towards the line, a huge wheelie, the checkered flag is out, and after 19 laps of Donington Park, round three goes to number three, John Reynolds. And John has every reason to be delighted because that is the team's third and his second win of the new season, and there's the confirmation. Top four places taken by Ducati, Hodgson, Hayden and Mackenzie filling the other three slots. Top privateer, John Crockford on the Suzuki. Two races on each of the events, of course, during the Superbike Championship in the year 2000. Each race will yield 25 points, so potentially 50 points up for grabs. And, of course, Chris Walker yielded zero, but he's going for it this time. Walker again in front on the number two Suzuki. Similarly, number eight, Steve Hislop, the pole position man, yielded zero. So it's John Reynolds, the number three Ducati, who got the big points and the big money in round three. This is round four. 19 laps, 47 and a half miles. Miles. Away they go again, and it's Chris Walker, number two. Right with him, though, has gone Hodgson on the orange Ducati. Number four, the INS GSE Ducati of Neil Hodgson, the young lad from Burnley, 25 years of age, who is now based in the Isle of Man. He is sitting in second place, anxious, in fact, determined to go one better this time. It's Hislop on the red Yamaha, the number eight Yamaha in third. But in the sunshine here, it's Chris Walker leading. John Reynolds on the number three Ducati in fourth place. With him, his teammate, number five in fifth, James Hayden. Walker leads as they flick it through the S's. Walker with Hodgson oh so close. Well, Chris Walker then made a mistake. Um, he went very wide on the entry point of the S's, and I suspect we'll see Hodgson pass Walker down here into the Melbourne Loop. And as I speak, we do, and almost Hislop got past then on bike number eight. So they're all bunching up nicely now at the front. And the good news is that the top five guys were the top five in qualifying, and any one of these could win. Well, the result a year ago here at Donington Park was a win for Reynolds. Hayden was second on that occasion. Hodgson was third. Walker was fourth. And, of course, Chris Walker, three times he's been second in this championship. And really that... Oh, elusive victory in the championship 
must be his this year. That's the way he'll be thinking. He had the opportunity to go to World Superbike. He turned it down. He accepted the Suzuki deal, and he's sitting in second place at the moment. But Neil Hodgson, a man with vast World Superbike and Grand Prix experience at the tender age. And another fastest lap for Neil Hodgson. So he's on the charge, settled in second year on the Ducati for Hodgson. He knows his way around Donington. He won one, two, five championship races here, had a very good Grand Prix performance here, and he knows the track intimately. The formula for these super bikes is that these bikes, for all intents and purposes, are road-going bikes that you can buy from the dealer's showroom. They have hotted up parts in them, kits, wheels are changed, tyres are changed, but the configuration of these bikes are that you can buy in the showroom. The manufacturers see this as a very, very important championship, and thus the popularity is there. The depth of field is immense. We've got 12 factory bikes out on the grid, and the level of performance from these bikes is world superbike level. In fact, the bike leading the race, bike number four of Neil Hodgson's, is the same bike that Fogarty won the world championship on last year. And that's underlined by the fact that Steve Hislop's pole position time round here, unbelievably quick, 133.25. And if I remind you that Kevin Schwantz's Grand Prix lap record round here only fell in 1997 to Michael Doohan. Doohan went round in the 32s, but prior to that, Schwantz was circulating no faster than Steve Hislop did pole position. And the man who's going really quick, it's Walker, through on the inside of Hodgson now. He is determined to get that Suzuki in front and stay there. Hodgson, though, riding with all the maturity of a seasoned campaigner, which of course he is. He rides motocross to keep fit in the winter with his resident in the Isle of Man, fellow resident Steve Hislop. They go out on motocross bikes. The uh, factory bosses aren't too keen about that in case they hurt themselves, but it certainly is a way of staying fit. John Reynolds, the man in third place, number three, an ex-motocross rider, a very good factory Kawasaki motocross rider. Oh, Chris Walker! A foot out of line on the Suzuki, in on the back brake, but he loves riding it that way. Maybe hard on the machinery, maybe hard on the tyres, but the riders behind will have seen that. Fourth place, James Hayden, number five, has made a move on Neil Hodgson and has got his Ducati up into third place. So it's Suzuki leading, Ducati in second, Ducati in third, Ducati in fourth, and then the Yamaha of Steve Hislop in fifth. There's the man. From Berkhampstead, James Hayden. His father was a doctor, I believe, retired now. James Hayden's father, but father and mother are here. They intend to be in every single round watching James. And he is a bright talent still, at a very tender age, but awful lot to offer. And that's why Ben Atkins of the Revy Racing Team snapped up James Hayden at the end of the 1999 season. He's riding shotgun to his teammate, John Reynolds. Number three, Hodgson there taking another look. His slop has wound them in. You could get a fishing net over the five of them. They are so close as they go down towards the Melbourne hairpin. Watch the rear end in the air again of Chris Walker Suzuki and locking up the back wheel, backing the bike in. And Hislop poised here to fire the Yamaha, maybe pass Hodgson. Watch Hayden though. Hayden in third. Chris Walker fully aware there is a battle raging behind him. It's anybody's race, Roger. When the teams want to test the braking efficiency of their bikes, they all come to test at Donington Park. Now, James Hayden is very, very good on the brakes. The Ducati brakes are proven. I'd imagine it's going to be somewhere on the brakes, probably into Redgate or into Fogarty's. It's a bright blue sky now here at Donington. The clouds have gone away. Still a stiff breeze, though, but it's a bright blue Suzuki leading the race. Chris Walker, 12 seconds back now in sixth place is Neil McKenzie. The caption telling the story, but hunting Walker down is number five, James Hayden. Very similar crash helmets, the fluorescent yellow and the red of Walker. Was that a tailender in front? Are they going to be able to get past the tailender? Right on the tarmac there, hopping the knee up over the red and white curve on the inside of the track, up to Coppice, the double apex right-hander, and here now, Hayden needs to get the power on as hard. Oh, and he got the power on in a big way. He high-sided it. The Ducati spat him on miraculously. James Hayden, OK, collects himself in a cloud of dust. That was a big one at a very fast part of the circuit. The closing stages of the last...
slab and it's a tooth and nail scrap now for second place. Hodgson versus Reynolds. Reynolds on the inside of Coppice. Is he going to be able to hold it and stay tight? Healing the Ducati over. Can Hodgson get the drive out of here? Chris Walker's heading for the flag in pretty spectacular fashion. Reynolds gets second. Number three, Reynolds. Number four, Hodgson gets third. But the race victory in round four goes to that man, Chris Walker. And what a blistering ride it was. So, 25 points go to Chris Walker, but uh, some way it compensates for what he didn't score in round three, but he'll be well aware that John Reynolds, who chased him all the way to the flag, has amassed a bag full of points here at Donington Park. Hodgson Hislop got fourth, Mackenzie fifth, a good ride. Rutter and Young scored there in ninth and tenth, and again top privateer John Crockford. So, 83 points, Reynolds leads the championship from Hodgson, Walker, two Ducatis and a Suzuki. What a great championship we have ahead of us. I was, I was too far back really to take uh, challenge Chris. Uh, James came past and then did his best to take me off with him. Uh, it was awful. I mean, he just didn't stand a chance with that. He just lost the back end and he went over. So, um, yeah, it was just uh, one of those things, really. Yeah, I mean, the bike, to be fair, the bike worked brilliantly. The tyres did go off a little bit, but that was down to the ones we chose, really, and obviously a bit better than everybody else's, so well chuffed. Joyous scenes on the rostrum as Chris Walker receives his garland for winning round four.